First, our top story, U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday explained to American citizens and to the world why he decided not to stand for re-election in the 2024 presidential race. Biden, speaking from the Oval Office, also outlined what he said was urgent challenges he sees as the nation is heading towards a November vote. VOA White House correspondent Anita Powell reports. U.S. President Joe Biden made the stunning decision to exit the presidential race from behind a screen, choosing to drop the news online. Three days later, in an Oval Office speech that was at times hopeful, at times determined, and at times wistful, he explained why. Biden spoke of his five decades in public office, touted his presidential record of domestic and political achievements, but then called for energetic new leadership to face tomorrow's challenges. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. But there's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Biden also thanked Vice President Kamala Harris, who was taken to the campaign trail with his endorsement and enough delegate pledges to net the nomination. He described her as experienced, tough, and capable, but added, the choice is up to you. He did not name-check the Republican in the race. But analysts say Biden's stark warnings all point to one man. Jennifer Murchia is a professor of communication and journalism at Texas A&M University. He talked about polarization. He talked about violence and political violence. Um, Those are all things that harken back to Donald Trump and his presidency. He talked about the threats facing the nation when he first took office um, January 2021. And so that was certainly um, about Donald Trump. But yeah, this wasn't a place for him to talk about Donald Trump. It wasn't a place for him to give a campaign speech. The president said his job will now focus on domestic challenges like civil rights and voter freedom, gun safety reforms, the quest to end cancer, and Supreme Court reform. He also cited myriad challenges the U.S. faces abroad, with wars raging in Gaza and Ukraine, and China becoming more emboldened in the Indo-Pacific. These foreign fires, analysts say, are likely to burn in the minds of concerned voters. Thomas Schwartz is a history professor at Vanderbilt University. That's really the concern I think people will have, is how does a lame duck president deal with foreign policy crises? We'll find out Thursday when Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visits the White House. The Israeli leader is also holding two other meetings while in the U.S., with Harris and Trump. But for the final act of this presidency, Biden remains the protagonist on America's biggest stage. Jim Kessler is executive vice president for policy for Third Way. He's like a, an athlete that, may, that is going to make the Hall of Fame and is retiring and, you know, gets the cheers from the crowds uh, finally, you know, for a long 50-year tremendous career. Biden clearly understood that this address would be a dramatic peak. So he used his final words to break the fourth wall with a message as old as America. The great thing about America is here, kings and dictators do not rule, the people do. History is in your hands. The power is in your hands. The idea of America lies in your hands. Anita Powell, View. The United States government has imposed sanctions on the Congolese rebel group M23 President Bertrand Bissimwa to Idwaneho rebel outfit and its deputy commander Charles Sematama. The Treasury Department in a statement on Thursday night said the two groups are responsible for the political instability in the Eastern DRC. Today, the U.S. Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control imposed sanctions on the Congo River Alliance, known by its French name Alliance Freve Congo, a coalition of rebel groups that seeks to overthrow the government of the Democratic Republic of Congo and is driving political instability, violent conflict, and civilian displacement, said part of the statement.
Washington believes that the principal member of AFC is the already U.S. and U.N. sanctioned M23 movement, an armed group they have for long accused of destabilizing the DRC's North Kivu province and perpetrating human rights abuses. RFA C is targeting individuals and entities associated with AFC, including Bertrand Bissimwa, the president of M23, Tidwaneho, an AFC affiliated armed group in the DRC's South Kivu province, and Charles Sematama, a commander and deputy military leader of Tidwaneho, said the Under Secretary of the Treasury of Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Bran E. Nelson. The diplomatic measure is said to be meant to hold the rebel leaders accountable for their actions in the restive Eastern DRC. Today's action reinforces our commitment to hold accountable those to seek perpetuate instability violence and harm to civilians to achieve their political goals, he said. U.S. has also redesignated Colonel Yoberu Nanga, who launched AFC alongside the leaders of M23. Nanga is the former president of the DRC's National Independent Electoral Commission, CENI, and was originally sanctioned by RFAC in 2019 for engaging in actions or policies that undermine democratic processes or institutions in the DRC. He is now being described as the acting leader of AFC.